it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today we are here in my new studio. I hope you had a chance to watch the tour that I published earlier this week. It is a wonderful space. It's still coming together but I am very pleased with the decision to move. So I want to get started right away sewing. This particular tutorial was a special request from a member of our community who happens to also be named Andrea. So I just want to say thank you to her for the great idea. She's going to make one of these for her mom for Mother's Day. I really think it is an awesome Mother's Day gift, so I'm really happy that I could get this out to you all in time for you to make one for your mom or perhaps even your mother-in-law. So what it is, is a tri-fold iPad organizer. Okay, so it opens, it closes by a Velcro, hook and loop Velcro, and then it opens like that. And on this uh, right-hand side, you have a pocket for pens and then a pocket size to hold post-it notes. And then when you open it up on the left here, there is another slip pocket that you could put a notebook in or other um, papers and documents that you have. And then in the center are, is the place where you would position the iPad. And the iPad is held in place with some very thick one inch elastic. I found this beautiful decorative elastic at the Hobby Lobby and I love it. So it works very well. You can see that the iPad is totally secure in there. And this project, like all of my projects, comes together so fast and I think you're going to be really surprised how easy this is to make. Now, if you do not use an iPad, you could, um, very simply, you could create an additional pocket panel for that center panel, and then you could have an amazing trifold planner cover, organizer, um, portfolio. So this is a very versatile project. Let me set this aside and we'll get started sewing. Okay. So for this project, you're going to need to cut out eight pieces of fabric that measure 11 inches tall by 10 inches wide. You're going to need three pieces of Pellon that measure seven and a quarter inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. You're going to need four pieces of one inch elastic that measure four and a half inches as well as one piece of sew on hook and loop tape that also measures four and a half inches long. Now the Pellon is an important part of this project and this time I saved the label so I could tell you all exactly what it is. It's Pellon Peltex 72F double sided fusible ultra firm stabilizer and I also bought that at Hobby Lobby. Now in the event that you do not have access to the Pellon, you could substitute a very thick cardstock, okay? But this would be my preference. This makes is much easier to work with than the cardstock or cardboard or maybe chipboard would be. But if you don't have any other choice, um, you can do that, okay? So we're going to start by crafting that center panel that holds the iPad. So take one of your pieces of material, fold that in half and press a center line. That center guideline makes this part so much easier. So take one piece of your elastic and you're going to from center measure over one inch and then just leave that elastic. You're going to have a little bit poking up over the top and it's at an angle like that. And I have a photo to show you what 
this will look like. So you're going to pin that in place and this tail here is going to just kind of be hanging out here and there it does not reach the edge of the fabric. But this top part does. And so it's angled like that. And you're going to position all four pieces at an angle one inch from center. And then you're going to take a second piece of fabric and position that right sides facing atop of that little elastic sandwich that we just made. And put a pin in each corner to hold that. And then for this entire project, I'm using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And for this particular part, we're going to stitch across the top and the bottom and then leave those sides open. Stitched across the top and the bottom. I want to go ahead and trim off that extra elastic and then turn that panel right side out and you should have these kind of remind me of suspenders for some reason because it's kind of making an X there and you got the little tails hanging out then you're going to go ahead and head on over to the iron and press that nice and flat Okay, I have pressed that. I want to take one piece of the pelon, which you remember is fusible on both sides, and put that in there and center it. And it should fit perfectly as far as the height goes. So you can tell if it's centered by feeling the edges there. And then if you have a cutting mat using your mat, you'll have about an inch and a quarter on either side. So then you're going to take these sides that are open and fold all that excess fabric inward. Okay, you want to leave like a quarter inch where there's no pelon because that's where we're going to stitch and you don't want all that bulk. If you butt that fabric right up to it, it's not going to fold nice. So leave a quarter inch there and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then I'm going to go ahead and press that so it doesn't shift. A panel that looks like this and those edges have been pressed inward. Now you'll take that elastic and fold it down and tuck it in to those sides and then go ahead and put a pin there to hold those in place. And you can see that center panel really taking shape there. We're going to go ahead and set this aside and work on the two pocket panels. So you'll take one of your pieces of fabric that's the interior and we're working on that left hand pocket panel. You're going to take another piece and fold that in half long ways and press that and then the folded edge will come in towards the center and the raw edges will line up with the right hand side and that's going to create your um, slip pocket where you can put your papers. Then take one additional piece of fabric and position that right sides facing on top of that. And for these panels, we're going to stitch across the top, down the right hand side, and across the base. And we're going to leave that interior left hand edge open to turn. So you may want a couple of pins to hold that. And again, just across the top, the right hand side, and across the base. Okay, before you turn this right side out, just clip those corners at an angle so you don't have a lot of bulk there when you turn that. And then you're going to head over to the iron and press this flat and then fold that open edge inward approximately an inch. Okay, so I've tucked that edge in there. You can see it a little better on that side. 
You're going to take another piece of the pelon and fit that inside. And push that pelon all the way over to that finished edge. And for this piece, there's about a half an inch of fabric that is not covered by that pelon. And that's what you want because, again, we're going to be stitching through um, four layers of fabric and that elastic, so we don't need any pelon at those folds. Now, because the pelon is fusible, go ahead and iron that down. And mine had started to curl a little, so that will flatten that out. Now the right hand side of the planner is done with the slip pocket there and then the pretty print on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and set that with the center and then we're going to work on that left hand side which requires three more pieces of material. So we'll start with the interior panel and then we're going to create that pocket and it is made by just folding a piece of that fabric in half and then aligning that across the bottom there so your folded edge is here and your raw edges are here to create the pocket and then I just folded mine in half to get the center mark so I can stitch right down that center line and then that'll divide the pocket in half. I have now my interior panel with a two-way divided pocket, which you can see like that. I want that to lay flat. I'm going to take the remaining exterior panel, right sides facing, and the same thing. We're gonna stitch across the top, down the side, and across the base. Then before you turn it right side out, just clip those corners, turn it right side out, press under that open edge, and then insert that pelon all the way to the edge. Alright, so I have that pelon inside of there, and then again about a half an inch of fabric there that will allow me to stitch through all that and still let the planner close nice or the organizer close nice. Okay, so now what happens is you lay out your two side panels and then this center panel comes right on top and there is about a quarter inch overlap. So the Two panels are underneath and then that center panel sits right on top and you just want to pin that in place so that everything is aligned and then you're going to stitch down that center panel securing four layers of fabric and those elastic tabs which are folded under. Okay. Once you're happy with how that looks, go ahead and stitch those panels down and you can reinforce at the elastic if you like. Okay, so I've attached that center panel with the two vertical stitch lines there and now I want to buzz all the way around the perimeter here and top stitch that and what that will do is add another layer of stability to that top elastic which at this point is only encased in that seam. Alright, so I've top stitched and now you just have to decide um, how you want this to close because we're going to attach the hook and loop tape. So I want to show you what I noticed here. This is only the second one of these I've ever made. This was the first. 
um, you'll notice that the pockets are reversed. So on this one, the divided pockets on the left, on this one, it's on the right. So whichever way you close up those side seams or the side panels, you know, if you choose to stitch down the right hand side or the left hand side is going to make a difference in how you assemble this. So I don't know that I have a preference as to which pockets on which side. Um, the only thing I will say is if you have the pen touching the iPad screen, that might not be the best idea. Whereas if you have just a papers perhaps or nothing, you could protect that iPad screen. Now, I could still do it with this configuration anyways, depending how I attach the hook and loop tape. So with this configuration, if I wanted to protect the screen, I would need to attach the hook and loop tape so that it closes on the left hand side versus closing on the right hand side. So I think that I'm going to do that. Um, you can sketch your preferred configuration out and then decide in advance how you'd want that to close. It doesn't bother me at all closing on the left, um, but again, I think it's just a matter of preference and what you're going to keep in these pockets, okay? So, for example, if you only had business cards in these small pockets, it wouldn't make a bit of difference. Those aren't going to damage your screen. So I will show you how to attach the hook and loop tape here so that the screen is protected and this paper pocket closes down. Attach a piece, the rough edge here, centered on that double pocket, all right? And this would be the same even if you're working on the opposite side. This rough piece is gonna go centered on the right-hand side of that pocket and I just put a pin in that to hold it and then with this sew-in hook and loop tape there's a little tiny edge that has no hooks or loops and you stitch right along that edge. If you come too far in with that hook and loop tape the needle and thread will get all tangled up in the hooks or the loops. So try and stay right on that narrow edge. Okay, so I have the rough edge or the hook side on this double pocket. Then I wanna put the paper side or the protector for the screen down and then close that. And I'm gonna take the soft side of that tape and position that so that it aligns with the hook side. And I just want to you know, center it and then go ahead and put a pin in that to hold it and then I can open this up and stitch down both sides. Okay, let's test it out. So the iPad would go in, the screen protector, and then it would close up and that is awesome. We'll do a little tester fit here with the iPad. See that fits in there nice and it is really secure. It offers the iPad a lot of stability. And then this one would just close off to the left. Super cute. And honestly, if you're carrying it like this, you know, like into a meeting or something, that works too. So um, I have a philosophy that there are really no mistakes in sewing. And this is proof of that because Every um, perceived mistake is really just an opportunity to improve the design. So I think this project was a blast to sew. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to designing some more um, covers that are similar to this, but to hold my planners because I'm absolutely planner obsessed. In fact, I just got a new one and it needs a cover. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. 
I will be back very soon with another studio update as well as an inspired sewing project. I hope you all have a beautiful week and as always, the creative genius in me celebrates the creative genius in you. Bye-bye everyone.